Hello and welcome to our BNW webinar week. I hope you are all in a good health in these turbulent times. The theme of this event is preparing and analyzing optical assemblies in Creo. Let's come to the topics. What can you expect? At first, a quick overview will be followed by a brief how-to section. Afterwards, the new database functionality to manage material and wavelengths will be introduced. Eventually, some use cases will also be shown. And now I would like to turn the floor over to our presenter, Mr. Krebner. Yeah, thanks to Florian for the warm welcome and the nice introduction. So I will present, uh, we'll start with a quick overview about smart optics. And then later on, we'll dig in some deeper to the details. Okay, what is smart optics? What can smart optics do for you? Uh, well, smart optics is a ray tracing tool based on geometrical optics. Uh, we only allow reflection, ref, reflection and refraction. Um, this is a tool for Creo. You can only use it directly in Creo, and it's fully integrated in Creo. So, which means you there's no need to import data or export data, which has the advantage to save time and money for you, and there are no other software required. So, what smart optics cannot do for you, um, any kind of physical optics is not supported. The light is calculated as a straight ray, not as a wave. So we do not support interference, diffraction, or polarization. Uh, the accuracy depends on Creo. We have some tests on customer side, who, which has shown that smart optics can compete with a high quality optical calculator up to four decimal places. So this is a quite good uh, solution for us and maybe also for you. Okay, and the only problem we have, in, uh, we need some improvements in the area of analysis. At the moment, um, we ha have no good evaluation for final surfaces. This is currently still missing, but we work on a solution for this. Okay, let's have a closer look uh, to the smart optic ribbon. Uh, well, smart optics comes in Creo with an extra tab. That ribbon is straightforward. You work from left to right, and the ribbon leads you through the whole process. So let's take a brief look at the groups itself. So we start on the left side with the project group. In the project group, you have access to the project definition dialog, and you can, uh, can manage all the settings there. You can um, also open or save some XML data. You can store the complete uh, smart optics information in a file. And of course, you can clean up the complete process after finishing. The next uh, group is a element group. All element definition take place here. You define the luminant, the material, reflectors, and so on. And you can define it where you want. You can choose if you want to define it from the ribbon or use the context menus in the model tree or in the graphic window. And in this group, you also have access to the list of elements for each element type, you will find a list, a dialog with a list where you have access to the most important information. By double clicking on the element, you will be lead directly to the definition itself. The next group is the view group. In this group, you can start the ray calculation by pressing the update button, or you can decide if you want to update permanently, which means that uh, if the Creo model is regenerated, also the calculation is updated. You can switch the uh, display of the rays and points on and off, and you can decide which kind of ray and point you want to see. 
At the moment, there are four types of rays. We have the N rays, which hit on an N surface, the absorb rays, which are absorbed uh, on, a, on a housing or something like this. We have a splitted ray, and we have rays with no N that are called endless rays. The next group is the result group. The motto for this group is what you see is what you get. So all uh, what you can see from smart optics or what you have decided in the few group will be exported. Yeah? So if only endless rays are selected, then only endless rays are exported. You can output the information to a file, or you can directly create features in Creo. The last group is a database group. Define your elements here. You can if define the materials or catalogs, wavelengths, and colors. Now, although here we have a dialog with a list of all elements, and you can customize the database to your needs. Not to your needs. Okay, let's come to our first survey. I will give the word to Florian back. Very well. So I will start this short survey. Do you already know smart optics? So well, okay. I've closed this survey, but. Um, um, I, I'm missing um, a lot of answers, so um, I guess the most um, don't know smart optics. So um, back to Oliver and his presentation. Okay, thank you. Oh, now we have a closer look to the different groups, how uh, you work with smart optics. So, uh, the most important um, information in the project definition dialog is um, how the complete definition information is saved and how you want to update your view. So you can save the complete information directly in Creo. Then the information is written to model parameters, or you can store the information only in session <clears throat> and Later on, you have to save it to an XML file, and of course, you can load it back from there. Though um, the advantage saving it to Creo models is that the reusability. Anywhere you assemble this part later on, the complete information is already already exists, and Smart Optics can reuse this. The disadvantage is that the parts will be changed, and they will also be changed each time you modify the setting in smart optics. Okay, the advantage of the XML uh, information is that you can use the same assembly with different settings. So you can set up up to three, four, five, whatever you want settings and run calculations in the same assembly without modifying the, the models and the parts in Creo. The disadvantage is that the part itself has no log logic itself. Yeah. It's up to you which setting you decide on. Okay, the next information is the view update. You can decide if you want to update the ray calculation manually or if you want to update the um, complete calculation while Creo regeneration. The, this option is only I recommend it only for smaller assemblies because if you have more than 1,000 rays, it could take a time if, until the calculation ends. Okay, let's come to the element definition. The first element is a illuminant. Yeah, the illuminant itself must be a part. Um, all curves in this part are interpreted as rays. So for each ray or for each curve, a ray will be sent through the, comp through the assembly. That direction of the curve is important. In Creo, you have a start and an end point for each curve, and this is um, also the direction. And you can decide if you want to send it in normal direction, inverse direction, or in both direction. 
Uh, another point you have to select in the illuminant definition is the wavelengths. Well, the wavelengths is required to calculate the refraction for the material. So each uh, ray hit on a material and depending then on the refraction index from the material and from the wavelength, the refraction will be calculated. And the color is required to paint the rays and points in the creographic window. Now, here are some illuminated examples. This is a simple homogeneous ex uh, example where you only have a pattern of a curve on a, on a surface, or you can construct a kind of point pattern where you uh, send a ray from, from one point, or some customers um, use a table pattern and construct a diffused ray. So I think it's up to you. You can construct the illuminant you want. Uh, uh, some um, suppliers of light sources also provide uh, ray files with, with more than uh, 2,000 rays or more, and you can import this to smart optics. Okay, now the next point is the material definition. Um, material must be a bar part, and of course, it should have a volume inside. You select the catalog and material information from the database. Any information about the material is predefined in the database, so you only need to select the, the name of the material here. Some examples for materials or lenses or prisms and so on. So other element definitions are uh, reflectors. Yeah, the reflector simply does what it's supposed to. Is you should reflect the ray. You can set up the grade of reflection in the dialog, and then you can select the end surface or end part. Uh, each ray we hit on this element will assign the end ray type, and we have absorbing elements and splitting elements. For the splitting element, the ray will be split into two rays and a new ray with a type split will be added to the ray list. Okay, once all element properties have been defined, the ray pass calculation can be performed. Um, as already mentioned, you can press the update button or you press regenerate, then the rays are calculated. And depending on your button state on the right side, the display can be different. If you switch on the end, uh, if you press the end buttons, then only rays which hit the end surface are shown. If you toggle to the absorb um, button, then only rays are shown which hit, for example, the housing, so which are absorbed. And the other element type is a splitting ray. So in this case, I have assigned a splitting surface to the first lens, so just to demonstrate the splitting type. Okay, now focus on this end rays. Um, if you now want to save this result, then you can save it to a file or you can store save it directly in Creo. So first have a look to how to save it to a file. Um, if you press a button, then you um, have to select the name of the file and the position of the directory. And you always have to select a reference coordinate system. Then depending on your button, a curve file and a point file will be created, and you can import this file into Creo. Uh, the curve file, you use a Creo command curve from file, select the file, and the curve will be created, a single feature. Or if you import the points, then a point feature will be created. Of course, uh, these files can also be used in other applications. Yeah, the easier way to get the information into Creo is to use uh, create features. In this uh, dialog, you also have to select a reference coordinate system. Uh, you have to enter a prefix name 
and then depending on the state our curves and uh, buttons are created uh, curves and points are created and then this uh, curves um, for for each curve or for each ray a point feature is created and on this point feature the curve is created so you really have the geometry then directly in crew and you can use it for, for uh, later on yeah the same for the point feature yeah only the of point feature with all resulting points are created okay this brings us to our second survey okay so the second survey um, is the question uh, does the uh, range of functions meet your expectations so i will start the survey now and please um, select one of the options so, okay, I will close this survey now and um, nice. So, um, mostly um, the partners and customers um, see that the functionality is more than expected. And um, well, back to the presentation. Okay, thank you. So, let's come to the last group in the ribbon it's a database group this uh, database is new since smart optics version 7 um, it's a sqlite database and the database itself is is stored in the local uh, it is stored on your local machine though no server required yeah the elements from the database are linked with the ID and the name to the uh, models in Creo. Um, we have four different database elements. Uh, we have the materials, which are listed in catalogs. We have the wavelengths and we have some colors. Well, the can I first start with the materials. You define all material information in a dialog. You have to decide which refraction index type you want to use. At the moment, they are two supported. We have the Selmayer coefficients where you enter six values from a polynome, or you can also enter uh, the refraction index for the different wavelengths. And then if some values are missing, smart optics will interpol I switch between these values. And at the end of the dialog, you can assign your material to different catalogs. The catalog itself uh, provide a quick access to the different materials. You can simply add or remove materials from this catalog. And of course, it's possible to add a catalog for your favorite materials. The next database element, the wavelength element, you enter the wavelengths in nanometer in this dialog and you choose a default color for each wavelength. If you later assign this wavelength to an illuminant, then this color will be used as default. And Smart Optics is already shipped with a list of wavelengths. Of course, it's possible to add more if required. Now, and in the list, you can see that for each wavelength, we also set a default color. Um, yeah, the last element in the database is the colors element. Well, the colors are required to paint the preview in the uh, 3D window and also curves. So the cur curves are created in the color you selected here. And you can select different colors for the different, different ray types. Okay. And uh, default colors to the wavelengths. Yeah, for, for each wavelength, I already shown it to you, you can select a default color. Okay, this brings us 
to our third survey, which supplier do you use? So, okay, um, but before we come to this survey, um, we had um, a customer question. How to define a material with a constant refractive index or refraction index? Um, I'm, I'm not sure about this, so maybe you can answer <laughs> this, Holly. <laughs> Okay, it's a refraction index, and if you have a constant value and you don't want to take care for the wavelengths, then you simply have to enter this value two times, and then Smart Optics will use this value for all wavelengths. Um, okay, I hope this will answer the question. Yeah, thank you. So uh, let's come to the next survey. Which supplier do you use? So I'll start, start the survey and give you some seconds time to choose again. Okay, this is uh, slightly surprising. So most of the customers are using um, the shot supplier. And um, okay, back to the presentation again. Okay, thank you. So let's come to our uh, last topic. The where smart optics can be used or where it already is used from our customers. Though of course the most customers really use it in optical assemblies where you have lenses and prism and so on. You have a housing and they want to know not only where the ray goes through the really optical parts so they also want to know well what is the with the geometry around the optic yeah and this is a really handy tool for your constructors to calculate to run calculation directly in creo to, to analyze this um, other customers you uh, use it for light guide calculations or some multi objects design studies where they um, yeah, calculate different um, tolerances. It is also possible to use it for mechanism simulation. If you have a flashlight and you move the housing forward and backward, of course you want to see how the light, uh, yeah, how the ray results. And other customers use it for inspecting field of view. Okay, so this will bring us to the last survey from my side and I will uh, close my presentation here and give the word back to Florian. Thank you. Thank you, Oliver. So let's do this um, short survey. Maya, would you use smart optics at first before we come to the end? Okay, so I'm going to close this survey now and um, we have 100% uh, usage um, in design studies. So thank you for the feedback and um, thank you for this interesting presentation. Uh, let's come to our contact details and other informations. Thank you for your interest and attention. This brings me to the end of this webinar. I wish you have a pleasant day and good night and good luck. Bye bye.